Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In this short lecture, we will answer most of your questions about dating in Islam. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al Dating is something which originated in Western societies. It was started by women and the original purpose for women to date was to find suitable husbands. Dating is a romantic stage in a relationship in which two people meet socially with the aim of each assessing the other's suitability as a prospective partner for a permanent relationship. It is a form of getting to know each other. And so different activities are arranged and done by the couple, either alone or with others. When someone is found to be suitable, an engagement period starts, in which the female is known as a fiancé, and the male also pronounces the same way as a fiancé, which means that in the future they plan to get married. The first thing we should understand is that Islam is not against love. In fact, love is encouraged in every aspect of our lives. Love for God, love for our parents, love for our spouses, our children, brothers and sisters, and all humanity. With love, this world will be a better place for all of us to live in. With the opposite, hate, this world will be a difficult place for anyone to live in. So the ideal is for our lives to be full of love wherever we are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran about love for husband and wife. A'udhu billahi min shaitani rajim. Wa min ayatihi an khalaqa lakum min anfusikum azwajal litaskunu ilayha. Wa ja'ala baynakum mawaddata wa rahma. And among his signs is this, that he created for you spouses from among yourselves, that you may dwell in tranquility with them. And he placed love and compassion within your hearts for each other. Indeed, in that are signs for those who reflect. You can find this in Quran chapter 30, verse number 21. I wish to digress a little and speak to people who came here from majority Muslim countries. In those countries, most of the people around were Muslims. So the children had Muslim friends all their lives. Parents had very little to do in raising their children to follow Islam. Here it is totally different. Most of the friends of your children follow a different religion. This is a culture different from the one you were raised in. At an early age, children start to speak about dating and other things in school, and some even start dating. Your children, growing up here and observing their friends involved in this behavior, want to know why they cannot do the same things. They are not going to buy it if you say Allah prohibited it or it is haram. So what should be done? You start at an early age to give them a sound Islamic education and get them to mix with other children who follow Islam. Enroll them with a private religious tutor who understands this culture or send them to a madrasa which has a rounded curriculum. I will give one lecture about raising our children in Western societies very soon. Make sure you subscribe so you do not miss any more new videos. Let's continue with our present topic. Accordingly, when a person is in love with someone, he or she should consider whether that person will be suitable as a wife or husband. And so you should ask these questions. Will I be happy to show this person to the world? Do I want my son or daughter to look exactly like him or her? Am I comfortable with their personality? personal behavior and habits, manner of speaking, likes and dislikes. All of these are questions that need answers before moving forward from the getting to know each other stage. 
Answers to these questions will help you to conclude whether or not you can live with this person for the balance of your life and whether this person is the right one to raise your children with you. If the answer is positive, then they should start to get to know each other better. And the very first thing to do is to invite him or her home and introduce him or her to your parents. If the person does not want to meet your parents or for you to meet his or her parents, this person is not thinking about marriage. When marriage is agreed upon, the boy proposes to the girl in a proposal ceremony. If the girl and the families are okay at this step, then the bride-to-be and the groom-to-be can start to know each other better for the long term. Intention is extremely important. If the intention is to identify a suitable spouse as the original purpose of dating intended, then there is no obstacle to getting to know each other in public places. According to Islam, it is not forbidden, meaning that it is not haram, for a man and a woman to be together in public places where there is movement of people all the time. And anything sinful cannot be committed. So, dating is not forbidden provided that the above conditions are observed. This getting to know each other phase should be by mutual agreement, limited to a few times only, and only during daylight hours. After this phase, a decision must be made whether to move forward together or part ways. There is no point in dating if the purpose is not marriage. To conclude, Dating in Islam for the sake of having fun with the opposite sex and without a legal Islamic marriage contract is totally forbidden. But meeting to assess suitability as a spouse is allowed. The main reason that makes dating in Islam prohibited is to protect both parties of possible damages of an unstable relationship. Thus, Pre-marriage meetings should be free of any kind of lust, touching, or hugging, and must be only for the sake of finding a suitable spouse. Therefore, it is not forbidden, it is not haram, to fall in love according to Islam. But managing this love and controlling the self is of great importance. This would prevent people from committing major sins like adultery and fornication and remain righteous in the sight of God as well as, as well as mankind. A little information about myself. I worked in the financial world for over 30 years and served as an imam as well for 10 of those years. I am now retired from the business world and my full-time job is as an imam. While, the, while in the business world, I also used to provide free counseling I met many American young ladies who use my services. Their common complaint was that they are not finding Mr. Right and they are tired of changing boyfriends and bed hopping. Many would cry in relating their experiences and would refer to themselves as feeling violated, cheap, unworthy, unclean, etc. So I would ask, what make you become intimate with a boyfriend if you feel that he would not marry you? The answer was overwhelmingly the same. If we do not become intimate, he will leave. My comment was, even though you were intimate, he still left. So it would have been better to stay your ground and be firm. Most of them heeded my advice from then on about celibacy and the results for them was astonishing. Within a short period of time, about two years, about 80% were married. So my advice to all of you young people, Muslims and non-Muslims, stay your ground, be firm, remain celibate and inshallah within a short period of time you also will have the success of marriage with the person that you love. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah.